the Bible, really, because this whole in Adam all die, in Christ shall all be made alive, and how the seed line in the Old Testament, all the way through there, and uh, the, the major doctrines that are encompassed in those two verse, verses there, 21 and 22. And I want to get into those things here, but I wanted to remind you of what we talked about last week, on how if you don't understand the backdrop, if you don't understand that stuff, then, then the Bible isn't even going to make any sense to you. Right. Um, it will just be all about getting saved. Right. You have to understand. Look, this isn't even reality. I've mentioned this in, in the Institute. What we are experiencing, this physical universe that we are in, isn't even reality. Amen. Now, what are you saying, Brother Dave? This isn't real? No, this is real, but it's temporal. Right. This isn't reality. Reality is the spiritual. How do I know that? Because God is a spirit. Amen. How do I know that? Because eternity is a spiritual place. Amen. And we're going to be there for eternity, not here for eternity. Amen. This had a beginning, and it's going to have an end. Mm -hmm. Reality is the eternal. That's reality. We don't even we see through a glass darkly right Amen. now. Yeah. But then face to face. We don't even understand reality. Okay, We're living in a temporal place. We only understand what we've been involved with. That's the only experience we have. And God uses this universe and this experience that we have to explain himself to us as best as he can until we can see him face to face. You have to understand what reality is. If you, you've got to grab hold of reality. Because if you don't grab a hold of reality, the Bible makes no sense whatsoever. I get tired of that saying, you know, that he's so heavenly minded, he's no earthly good. Amen, bro. As if that's somehow bad. <laughs> right. That's a compliment. <laughs> How's that bad? I mean, you're not going to prevent the end of the world from coming. You, you aren't stopping the prophecies. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ, shouldn't you be about your father's business? Amen. Yep. Right. So it's not so bad to be so heavenly minded. Amen. You should have your mind on things above, not on things where? On the earth. On the earth. Right. Right. That's Colossians. So be so heavenly minded you're no earthly good. Amen. Amen. So earthly minded, no heavenly. Yeah, most people are so earthly minded, they're no heavenly good. Uh -huh. yeah, true. And as Christians, we're talking about profession. Yeah. So we're, we're we're here in this place here, which is all about the resurrection. And today is the first day of the week, mm -hmm. and we're here gathered together in recognition not of its birth, of Amen. its resurrection. Amen. Amen. That's why we meet today. Amen. And some people think that his birth is so much more important than his resurrection. That they took today off. Right. They closed the doors and locked them. Is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For it is in Adam all die, even Amen. so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. Now you've got to understand how wicked and vile you are. Out of all the creatures in the universe, you are the most wicked thing in existence. Right. You're not the most important thing. Amen. You're not the most valuable thing. If you were valuable, then how graceful was God's death, burial, and resurrection? Right. Grace is getting something you don't deserve. If you deserved it, then it's not a very graceful act to begin with. Right. Uh -huh. You busting your buttons and thinking you're all that and so important to God, as if everyone on earth is just so important to God, you're worthless, man. Amen. Amen. A good example that I've drawn out before is Uzzah. <laughs> right. Uzzah's that guy who, when David was having the ark brought into the city, who was there where the ark was being carried into town, and it started wobbling, mm -hmm. and it was about to fall. And, of course, in his heart, like any man does. Right. He's thinking, well, we can't let the ark of God get dirty. We got to celebrate Jesus' birth. The ark can't. We can't. This can't, It can't fall. It can't touch the dirt. It's good. God's ark is going to get dirty. 
in an instant, his philosophy killed him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Because he reached out to catch that art, and he died right on the spot. Why? Because his philosophy told him that man wasn't dirty, but that dirt was. That art would have been better off falling in the mud than touching a vile, wicked, rebellious, dirty, nasty, ungodly, lascivious, iniquitous man. Uh huh. That's right. Man is dirtier than dirt. Amen. Man, look, God made dirt at the beginning, said it was good. Man is no good. You're no good. You never were, were any good. Amen. Never going to be any good except Christ that lives in you. Amen. Of the power of negative thinking. But yet our preachers have us convinced that the next soul is so valuable Uh that we can chuck the entire New Testament and the commands of God and wink, wink, and ignore what God has told us to do because the ends justifies the means. Uh That's Mm antichrist. That's unbiblical. Mm -hmm. Am I getting you to think this morning? Amen. Amen. We're rolling. Man is wicked, worthless. So get over that philosophy that man is just so important to God. Remember, the reality is this backdrop of the battle between God and the devil, and you're just a bit player in it. That's all you are. You're a bit player in it. And now that you're saved, you have an opportunity to have an effect to bring glory to God. Amen. In that battle... Not on earth. In that battle. Right. Principalities and powers. When a man gets up and goes out and makes a fool of himself, street preaching, that has an effect. Are people getting saved? How effective is that? You see the mindset? Uh Uh-huh. Evangelism. Uh Uh-huh. They're looking at, are people getting saved? God might just be looking at an obedient son and saying in that battle in front of all the heavenly hosts, see my servant who's just such a fool to believe what I said. Uh-huh. Because I said it. Because I'm his father, even though it didn't make any sense to him. He just did what I told him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. See, this is playing a role in a kingdom that you can't even see. Right. Amen. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. This is where Paul's going. That's where we're headed. See? And so this chapter is all about the resurrection and the importance of that because it's about the eternal. It's about the forever. It's about the reality. And in verse number 22, for as in Adam all die. There's so much doctrine wrapped up into this stuff. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. We looked at it last week, but I'm going to show it to you again. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Uh Therefore, if any man be in Christ, remember in Christ all shall be made alive. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. You've got to be in Christ. And you become a new creature. And this in Adam all die, Romans 5.12, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And that's talking about the sin nature, the imputation of sin. The sin of Adam has been imputed to the entire race of men. Mm-hmm. And for the sake of time, if you want to do it on your own study or whatever, that's fine. But God made Adam in the image of God. But then there was something that happened. Right. Before he had children, there was a sin nature that was brought into that thing because he rebelled against God. Right. And in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. I believe that he did die that day. Amen. And you had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Right. We were born dead, right. just as Adam was Amen. dead. After that moment, he was walking death. Uh-huh. He was conscious, but he died. His spirit was there, but it was dead. You're born with a dead spirit and need to be born again. Yes. Now born again starts to make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Born, if, if, if your first birth wasn't a problem, then what is born again makes no sense. Right. So then after the fall in Genesis chapter 5, the Bible says that his children were in his likeness, not in the image of God. Right. 
we still have a trichotomous nature, which is right. soul, spirit, soul, and body, like Thessalonians bears out for us, chapter 5, the very end of the chapter there. We have three parts, but the spirit is dead. That's right. And he died. And he died. That fullness of the image of God, that divine nature is gone, but it can be restored in Christ. Amen. All shall be made alive. Are you in Christ this morning? Amen. Amen. Are you a new creature? Amen. Yes. So you've got to be a new creature. And if you don't understand this concept, then you just become a religious person. Yep. Because the Bible says in Titus chapter 3, verse number 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. By the washing and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It says his regeneration is in there somewhere. Washing too. and regeneration. Yeah, washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. There's a regeneration. There's a renewing in there. What does that imply? That implies that something that was lost is now regained. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, Pelagianism is, is uh, heresy. That's big time. Mm -hmm. Pelagianism is just a fancy theological term for those that believe there is no sin nature. The, the Orthodox religions, like, say, Roman Catholicism, they believe in a Reformation theology. They believe that the, that the flesh is just the problem, and so therefore you need to stop sinning. And the less sin you do, the more grace you merit for God and all this other kind of stuff, and then you can maybe go to heaven. Well, are you religious or are you saved? Amen. Or are you born again? There's a difference. That's right. And here's the difference. I'll show you with a silly illustration that I use in Institute over and over and over again. And that is the example of creatures, because God says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so let's just pick creatures. An alligator and a giraffe. <laughs> An old alligator and giraffe and alligator. The Bible says that all, those that are in Christ get to be with the Lord. Those that are in Adam do not. So we'll say that those in Adam are alligators, and those in Christ are giraffes. Okay, there's your two creatures. Those in Adam and those in Christ. Okay. Now, if the Roman Catholics are right, then all an alligator has to do is act like a giraffe. So an alligator, out of his religion and devotion to wanting to go to heaven, he says, okay, well, these giraffes are on their way to heaven, and they say that you got to be a giraffe to go to heaven. So this alligator starts eating giraffe food, starts living with giraffes, starts speaking giraffe language, picks up all the mannerisms of the giraffes, sleeps in the giraffe wherever they sleep, <laughs> but dies an alligator. Right. Only giraffes go to heaven. So what did all that religious devotion do for him? Uh, Nothing. Amen. Right. Nothing. That alligator is hopeless. He can't, he can't be saved. He is without hope. So what is his only hope then, according to the Bible? Mm -hmm. He has to be changed into a giraffe. And he has not the power to do that. Right. And you don't have the power to change your nature. Right. So you have to cry out unto God for mercy and say, change me into that which, which, which would help me. Amen. Make me a new creature. Amen. I can't change myself. So that alligator cries out like I did one day, and God turned me miraculously into a new creature, which is a giraffe, and I've been heaven-bound ever since. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches, a new birth. Mm -hmm. That alligator can't reform himself into a giraffe any more than a Catholic can reform himself into a Christian. Mm -hmm. And this is the nature of the New Testament. You gotta grab a hold of this because this is this all this is right in, in Adam all time, Christ shall all be made alive. You gotta become a new creature. You got no power to do that. Any more than an alligator has the power to change what he is. And I can go on and on about your about the proof that you see every day that this is true. Not just in the Bible, but you see this every day. By 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 nature, what do fish do? They swim. By nature, what do birds do? They fly. By nature, what do sinners do? Sin. Right. Amen. Did you teach your children how to lie and be selfish? Mm. <laughs> I actually got that from their dad. <laughs> In all practicality. Amen. Did you have to be taught how to lie and be selfish? No. 
So the problem aren't the sins that you commit. The problem is what you are. Amen. The sins that you committed before you got saved were only outward evidence of what you were by nature. Which is a sinner. So your nature has to be changed. And so God did that. That's what being born again means. This then transcends us into the idea of eternal security. First of all, I want you to show, there's, show you there's two natures to a Christian now. You understand that this new nature comes, this new creature comes. Now you have a new nature and a new man. The Bible calls it the new man, the old man. Man, I can't flesh this all out in Sunday school. We do this in institute. And now you have this war, Romans chapter 7. You have this war now. You've got this new man wanting to do right. You've got this old man wanting to do wrong. And you're battling back and forth, back and forth, like Paul says in Romans chapter 7. But look at Galatians chapter 5. This brings us into eternal security. Because see, in Christ all shall be made alive, right? Look at verse number 16. Paul says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strikes, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Now you found yourself on the list after you got saved. Did Paul just say that you lost your salvation? You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, right? <laughs> no. Not what he said. no, it's not what he said. He said these are the works of the flesh. Right. Your flesh never did get saved. That's right. Amen. Right. Right. Your flesh ain't been changed yet. Glory. Right. That's the old man. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when you do those things, it's no longer you that do it, but sin that dwells in you. Mm -hmm. That's your old man that's doing it. Wow. That destroys. Without the new nature, we're all hopeless. And that's why we've got to walk after the Spirit that we don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Your old man never did get saved. You got a new man. That's right. Mm -hmm. Walk in it. That's why you got to die daily. Mm -hmm. Look at first. Now, this is powerful over here in 1 John chapter 3. <laughs> you know, I, I don't understand how um, eternal security has been debated for centuries and centuries and centuries. It's really pretty simple. Yes, it is. Now, I'm going to throw you a curveball here, and if you're not on your game, you're going to swing and miss. <laughs> here it comes. Verse number 8. Batters up. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Right. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Remember when Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil? Mm -hmm. To the Pharisees there. Look at verse number 9 now. Uh-oh. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Amen. For his seed remaineth in him, God's seed. That's Jesus. Mm-hmm. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Amen. <gasps> uh oh man, I thought I was born of God. I've sinned. That's your flesh. That's right. That's your old man. Yeah. Your new man, who is born of God, cannot <laughs> sin. Amen. How can he lose his salvation then? Whosoever is born of God cannot and doth not <laughs> sin because he is born of God. Amen. This isn't deep stuff. The same author two chapters earlier said, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Mm -hmm. 
Is the Apostle John, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways? No, no sir. No, there's no problem here. Right. Right. Amen. And that's why you have to let Christ live in you. Amen. That's why you have to crucify the flesh. Amen. You have two natures. Eternal security is a piece of cake. God uses three terms to describe your spiritual standing in Christ. You know what those terms are? Born again. A son of God. And circumcised in heart. Now, God uses those three descriptions of your spiritual standing in Christ so that you can get it. This is what I mean. Look at John chapter 1. The Gospel of John chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Gotta hurry because I'm down in the last five, six minutes. John chapter 1. Bible, Bible, Bible. Talking about the Word that became flesh and all that there. John chapter 1, verse 1, 2, 3. But we're at verse number... 12, but as many as received him, the word, which is Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. There you go. Those that receive Christ are the children of God. So stop lying to people and tell them, we're all God's children. No, we're not. Amen. Amen. They are still of their father, the devil. Right. Amen. They're in Adam. They are in Adam. Mm hmm they haven't been born into the family of God. Amen. John chapter 3, born of the Spirit. That which is of the flesh is flesh. Amen. That which of the Spirit is spirit. That's right. If you're born of the water, you got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with this, right, John chapter 3? Please look it up. If you're not familiar with it, please look it up. Amen. Verses 7 and 8, I believe it is. That which is born of the water, you have to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Well, how many of you were born of the water already? Amen. I'm here. Amen. <laughs> Is that talking about baptism? No. 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 Your mother's water broke and you were born. Yep. That which is of the flesh is flesh. Right. That which is of the spirit is spirit. Amen. You need to be born of the spirit, born of God. Amen. And that's by receiving Christ and becoming in Christ. You have a new nature. You're now a giraffe. You're no longer an alligator. Your nature has been changed. You're heaven bound. Now live like a giraffe. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you go back to the river, try to do a death roll because it was fun. Don't work too good with a long neck, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're a giraffe now. Live like one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God uses born again, your sonship in Christ, and circumcision of the heart to describe your spiritual standing in Christ. Now, let me ask you something. God isn't mincing words here. Amen. How many of you have ever been born physically? Okay. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Now, how many of you can become unborn? Is it possible for you to become unborn? You can't change the fact. You can go off yourself. Please don't do that. Amen. Theoretically speaking. It doesn't change the fact that you've been born. <coughs> Your father, you can change your name, move to the other side of the world. You cannot change who gave you your DNA. You, there's nothing you can do about it. You cannot change that. Circumcision is self-explanatory. Now, do you think God was playing around and just didn't have any other terms to use when he described your spiritual standing in Christ by using terms that are physical in nature. And those terms that he used that are physical in nature are impossible to change. And you think that it can be changed in your spiritual standing? You cannot become unborn again any more than you can become unborn. That's right. You cannot right. become Amen. Amen. not a son of God any more than you can change who your father is. Right. You cannot become uncircumcised 
in heart any more than you can become uncircumcised. In the natural. Right. It's that simple. Right. How are you going to become unborn again? Hello? Amen. Why is this even being debated? Right. Your eternal security, your eternal security. That's right. what the Bible teaches. God uses terms, these terms, for a reason. Do you get it now? Amen. Do you get it? In Adam all die. In Christ shall all be made alive. And I'll, I'll wrap it up with 2 Corinthians again, chapter 5. These are big doctrines. The imputation of sin, being born again, eternal security. One verse, perhaps all that, it's all in there. That's why we've taken the time to look at it. Look at verse number 20. Now we are, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him, Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So just as much as the sin of Adam was imputed unto you, the righteousness of Jesus Christ has been imputed to you Amen. if you've been changed into a new creature. Amen. That's right. Amen. And people are going to get mad at God because they were born sinners and say God's not fair. Are you getting it? Amen. I'm using pauses for effect. That you, that you, hopefully you're thinking and not sleeping. Amen. Mm -hmm. A wicked thing. Amen. See? And so, these three little things that we've talked about this morning, you know, the imputation, the eternal security, the born again and that stuff, man, we talk about this stuff at length in the Institute. And this is stuff that's foundational. Amen. It's foundational. You have to know this stuff. Then the New Testament starts to make sense. There you go. Now you know that all you have to do is die daily. You can't, you can't live a religious life. You can't do it. Quit trying to live like a giraffe as an alligator. If you've already been changed into a giraffe, that alligator's hanging around. Right. And Paul's going to get into that idea where that's finally going to be taken care of when you get a new body and we all uh -huh. should be changed. Right. right. Amen. And we'll God. put on incorruption. We'll put on immortality. Amen. All that stuff's coming up. Amen. I had to Whew. set the table. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> so stop being religious and trying to live a life of a Christian. Just get out of the way and let Christ live in you. The hope of God. That's the key. You'll never be able to do it without Christ. Amen. Amen. You have a new nature. But remember that backdrop story. What's the purpose of all that? Why all the complicated theology? Just because God just feels like doing things complicated? Right. <laughs> because it's a show to the heavenly of his wisdom. Right. For the end game. Because Paul's going to be getting into the eternal. And we're going into eternity. All questions will be answered and settled forevermore. Amen. To the heavenly host and to ourselves. Amen. Let's let's stand here and be dismissed. Our philosophies are killing us or very are harming us. We are not great. We are not good. There is none good but God. Amen. That's right, man. And if your religion says that you're good, then chuck it. Amen. What the Bible teaches. If your religion is a Reformation religion, chuck it. It's false. You can't reform yourself. You've got to be changed into a new creature through Jesus Christ. Amen. In Adam all die, in Christ shall all be made alive. And now you wonder why we get mad when people attach Jesus Christ to some darkness? Amen. That's right. It's a bigger deal, man. Amen. It's a bigger deal as it plays out to the heavenly. A much bigger deal than you have any clue if you're not paying attention to the Bible. And that's why Amen. people that read their Bible get upset at this time of the year. Yes. Because it's way more than people getting saved. This has to do with the righteousness and holiness of God. Amen. This has to do with who God is and my place in representing God and His wisdom. Am I making God out to be a fool or am I making God out to be wise? Amen.